So welcome to CTE 4 and 5, Certificate in the Teaching of English as a Second Language offered by IGNO Indira Gandhi National Open University 2504. So let's begin with teaching elementary students and teaching higher secondary students. There are a lot of similarities in uh, the aspects of learning, teaching and learning. And uh, so I have combined these two papers. So you can see the characteristics of both the learners are almost similar. Maybe we have differences in terms of the activities we uh, allot to them, undertake the activities that are given to these students. Uh, students, especially from the elementary level, need a certain type of activities, a certain approach and students in the higher secondary level in their adolescent period, they need uh, a lot of uh, extra attention in the sense they face a lot of troubles in life. They are in entering into the adulthood stage. So they are facing identity issues and so and so. So they have to be part of that. So we have to address those issues also. So we have to be sensitive to the So the nature of the learner at the elementary level and uh, the nature of the learner at the higher secondary level, there are differences a lot of similarities and also differences in terms of how you approach a kid and how i approach an young learner what are the needs of the kid what are the needs of an young learner right a kid needs uh, extra attention at various levels and but a uh, young learner uh, needs attention in a different sense in that sense he faces a lot of issues in life but the kids need emotional uh, support, care, and affection. Of course, the young learners also need those. But uh, how you uh, mentor them is quite different, right? And the activities that you give to them. So we will see in de detail about these things and how to uh, handle these types of learners, right? So especially I will focus more on kids and uh, there are similarities that you can take from those cues you can understand some of the uh, associated learning patterns and activities we can engage i'll try to differentiate right i'll present my screen if you can see it <coughs> just say yes sir is it visible Can you see the screen? Right. So teaching elementary students and teaching higher secondary students. So the role of a teacher, the role of a learner, we discussed all those things in the first session in CT 3 and 4. And uh, as discussed earlier, you know about the uh, nature of a learner, a pupil and a uh, role of a teacher, right? And I have added one more uh, uh, important is identity, right? Uh, the formation of an identity is important in an young learner, okay? In his adolescent age, he uh, comes in terms with life and various aspects of life and puberty and such stages. Uh, the learner, young learner faces a lot of issues in life and uh, you have to be a counselor for an young learner, right? Uh, maybe they may face issues in academic matters. They may face issues related to personal matters or stress related matters or sexuality issues such likewise. So you have to address this as a counselor and a mentor. So both academic and personal stress related matters have to be addressed at the higher secondary level. So as a mentor, that is why this new system we have introduced and NAC is introducing this new revised Bloom's taxonomy and the mentor mentee system is part of all educational institutions. And we have even counseling sessions, counseling therapists for students who uh, uh, 
uh, get into uh, issues like love affairs or uh, stress related issues or depression and anxiety right they uh, they are counseled in various ways and even the teacher has a major role to play as a mentor in the uh, personal issues of the students as well but teachers also have to focus on various academic issues goal setting for example they may very importantly uh, students may not be able to uh, identify their interests okay their goal so teachers can mentor them as a uh, they they can help them to set their goals career goals and identify their interest see each one of you will have one particular interest or one particular hobby that you are so passionate about each one of you will have something that you are so passionate about one hobby or one interest that i try to identify that and work on that you'll be a successful person even if you are not able to make that as a career for suppose music is your uh, <coughs> interest or uh, sports is your interest or something related to reading or literature try to identify it each one will have one passion that you are <coughs> that you can't live without so try to make it as your career you'll shine in life otherwise uh, at least try to make it as a part time activity so if you are studying a subject which you don't like which you are, if you are in a career which you don't like try to uh, <coughs> bring in what you like okay as part of your life okay as a part time activity or somewhere right so we discussed all those things the learner at the primary level the personality <coughs> questions to ponder and underprivileged learners as well as the same uh, aspects related to higher secondary learners as well and coming to lsrw that is what we will be focusing mainly today uh, we discussed teaching stra strategies classroom social group learning group preparing the lesson plan group pair work teachers should reflect and for higher secondary students uh, group work group discussions and pair work will work well maybe if you if you think about uh, uh, kids you can give them a picture and ask them to talk about it you can show them uh, maybe role play is also uh, useful for both categories it's effective and we talked about teachers reflection and other things so coming to speaking so lsrw listening speaking reading writing this is the most important with regard to uh, language learning so which is the most important skill or which is uh considered to be the first can you anyone say or <clears throat> in this order listening speaking reading and writing uh, which is performed first in the beginning maybe uh, in the evolution of humans can you say something about that which is the first skill lsrw listening uh, speaking reading writing first what we do in that order you can comment in the chat box we listen right yeah listening very good listening and then speaking reading writing but which is a skill we uh, give more importance to right in our education system we do that we um, you have given more importance, more stress to one particular skill. Uh, we don't give much importance to speaking or uh, reading or listening for that matter, but something we give more importance to <clears throat> writing, right? Examination. So nowadays we have seminar assignments. Seminar is a good way to make a student speak and assess them, right? All these things are part of your continuous internal assessment, right? It is not just examination today, but mostly we give importance to examination, to a written. But we have to, we have to give equal importance to all these four skills. Only if you develop all these four skills, you can be an effective speaker, you can be an effective reader, you can be an effective writer and listener. So all these things can be, uh, should be given importance. Only then you can improve your proficiency in English, right? You should every day make it a practice to give importance to all these four skills. You should train your students like that. So give activities that 
uh, cater to all these four skills. Right? At least for an hour, they should do listening, speaking, reading, writing. All these should be there as part of our everyday life, as part of the student's life. So speaking, let us ask ourselves this question, what is speaking? Speaking in many things, speaking with others, giving information to others, telling others how you feel, persuading others. So uh, you recite a poem, performance, poetry, stories, to tell a story, storytelling as a therapy, storytelling as a form of expression, writing poetry, sharing your poems, sharing your creative works. Impromptu speeches. What is impromptu speeches? Sudden speech. I give a topic, so you have to speak on that, right? Okay. If I give a topic, you have to on the spot speak on a particular topic, right? Impromptu speeches. So if you are good in your language, you can do, you can express yourself well. So in order to improve your language, you have to do certain things. Reading is primary. I told you, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And immerse yourself, indulge in reading. Right, as much as possible. Make reading as part of your everyday activity. Right? <clears throat> I'll talk about that in the reading section. Expressive language, whereas listening is receptive language. And we have to be good listener. If you want to write well, if you want to speak well, you have to listen well. You have to listen the other person, what the other person says. Right? Benefits of oral communication. It increases the vocabulary and the ability to use the language. We articulate when speaking. Right, speak coherently in complete sentences. Don't break your sentences. So for that, reading is primary. <coughs> Practice speaking. So if you go on reading, then you will automatically, unconsciously, you will get those sentence patterns. You will occur that, right? Uh, that is why we have this. Uh, should grammar be taught? Okay, we have this argument. Uh, become become fluent in expressing their feelings and opinions, improve listening skills, listen to various points of view, different points of view, and value the opinions of others, develop confidence in the use of language, and enhance their ability to communicate with a variety of audiences, right? Assess your audience to youngsters or uh, educated people or they assess the audience and speak accordingly. Reinforce grammar structures, intonation, rising intonation, falling intonation, pronunciation. Refer Daniel Jones Dictionary. A Cambridge Daniel Jones Dictionary is the best for pronunciation phonetics. So uh, I want you to make use of it. Through actual usage, you have to speak in context. Use words in context. Understand words in context. In English, every word has <coughs> more than one or two meanings, okay, more than two or three sometimes, right? Every word has more than one meaning and it is used according to the context. So context sensitive, words are context sensitive. So you should know when and where to use. I would recommend you to uh, uh, use Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary. Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary, it's cost around 500 rupees. If you want to be an advanced learner in English, uh, buy this book by this dictionary oxford advanced learners dictionary i will also give you a link for an online dictionary cambridge online dictionary you can also uh, refer that pronunciation of uk and us british pronunciations are there and you can also uh, check the examples uh, in context okay according to the context so likewise you can uh, understand uh, opportunities for vocabulary development how as teachers you can create opportunities for students right through games quiz follow-up activities after reading so opportunities for creative speech just ask them to speak on a particular topic right uh, dramatize role plays reporting sessions debates or uh, ask them to come forward and uh, maybe make a dialogue right talk about maybe two friends are talking about the trip or two friends are planning for something right uh, songs recitations right and opportunities for verbal communication through planned group work or pair work so group discussion works well especially in the higher secondary level this may include group activities as puzzles problem solving exercises case studies group discussions sharing experiences show and tell informal conversations, collecting information. So I also told, uh, told you about peer teaching. That's also effective in the higher secondary level. Fast learner can teach a slow learner. 
So keep in mind all these things. You can initiate these activities, certain activities for um, kids and certain for uh, and the other for uh, or higher secondary students. Almost all these things work for higher secondary students as well. <coughs> so just a small uh, video showing how the teacher right reads stand up videos with unlimited stop dramatizes and, and how kids are learning can you can you hear the video can you see the video and hear clearly you can just uh, respond to me in the whatsapp group how uh, <clears throat> she dramatizes and the children are enjoying these activities, right? Language learning, that's important to be cheerful, energetic, lively, and make the students enjoy with the students in the learning process and dramatize. So especially if you are teaching uh, kids, okay, uh, from 6 to 11, from the age group of 6 to 11 especially, you have to be as lively as possible in order to <coughs> engage them, right? So, opportunities for articulation. You have to give opportunities for articulation, intonation, enunciation. These would mainly be in the form of intensive listening experiences in which child experience and hears the speech patterns and stress patterns in English and is given activities for practicing these, right? It could include controlled recitations or read aloud sessions make the uh, student read aloud, right? Special activities to reinforce correct pronunciation of particular consonants which are being mispronounced. So I remember uh, when I was a student, my teacher used to 
make me stand and read aloud, right? You would have experienced in your school days how teachers always make us to stand and read aloud or call us in front and we, we, we have to read a passage, read aloud, right? These things are uh, reinforcing practices that, that, that uh, corrects our pronunciation, that improves our pronunciation especially and uh, uh, improves our efficiency ultimately. So also encourage your students to use dic dictionary. At least they should learn 10 new words every day. So this is an online dictionary, Cambridge, uh, <coughs> Oxford, Cambridge Online Dictionary, right? If you just type a word, it will give you uh, uh, maybe right. For example, accelerate, right? Vehicle is driven, accelerated. You have accelerate. UK pronunciation, accelerate. US pronunciation, right? You can make use of this uh, dictionary. It's available online, right? If you Google it, online Cambridge Faucet. Dictionary, you'll get Faucet. it. So you know that, right? So uh, introduce a dictionary to your students and encourage them to uh, make use of it today. They can use it in their mobile phones, right? Listening, coming to listening has been defined in many ways. Linguists, language learners view listening as the first language skill, right? As you responded, it precedes speaking, reading and writing and is used more than the other three together. So as when a child is born, it listens to the surroundings, observes surroundings, especially it imitates parents, mother, And more than just hearing, good listening involves an active conscious effort to understand, to evaluate and listen, appreciate what is heard. So if you're just hearing, that's not listening, right? If you just go on hearing, right? Listening needs a conscious effort. You have to put in some effort in order to <clears throat> listen. Just hearing, you won't process it anything. You won't process those words or what the uh, speaker, the sender is. Uh, same, right? You won't receive it, right? If you want to listen, you have to make a conscious effort. Hearing is different, listening is different. A powerful communication tool that puts us closer to being in charge of our lives by enabling us to make decisions based on evaluated information, insight, and understanding. So it is a vital mental capacity that involves social and cognitive processes. So some of the points on listening. So there is another term, critical listening. What is critical listening, right? You should read a passage. You would have seen that there are comprehension passages given in competitive examinations uh, <clears throat> and your English lessons you would have written in your school days. What are the main points? You read, you listen to a particular passage or you listen to a recording. So you have to critically listen. What are the main points? Identify the main points. So what are the... Uh, lesser points, what are the subtopics, right, under each main idea? Are the ideas explained? Are the ideas supported by facts? So you have to listen in that manner. Are the ideas explained and supported by facts? So this, this comes uh, similar to paragraph writing. A paragraph will have one single idea. Whether that idea is supported by facts, supporting statements, does the speaker follow a logical order? Right? Then is there coherence in the speech of a particular person or the particular subject he is speaking? Does the speaker try to present different points of view or that, is he trying to just insist his own point? Right? Is he giving respect to all the other points? If there is a group, every organization has a group. Right? There are group dynamics. We talk about group dynamics. And each member of the group will voice out their opinions, whether the leader is respecting the opinions of each and every group. See, likewise, you have to critically listen. The critical listener thinks about what he or she hears, asks questions and discusses his or her views with others. And there are uh, this intensive listening and extensive listening, right? Intensive is uh, there is a recorded uh, <coughs> audio that you listen to and do some activities associated with that, or you do some worksheets or 
some exercises based on that listening. Extensive is you listen to so many things. You listen to uh, songs, you listen to various speeches. So that is extensive. Maybe you listen for pleasure, right? Intensive is you are given an activity or you are, uh, uh, there is a passage that is read or there is a recorded uh, info that is given to you and you have to answer according to that and you have to do some exercises based on that some intensive listening you will do in order to carry out the activity right so creative listening what is this creative listening right you listen you create out of that listening to create maybe the highest form of listening as the child is encouraged to gain sensory impressions. What he or she hears, she is able to see pictures, smell scents, feel textures, listens carefully. And the child is a creative listener. In order to be a creative listener, uh, the child should also be uh, exposed to creative activities such as acting out stories, role playing, drama, making up poems. So this is listening creatively allows this child to reconstruct what he or she has shared or heard either through drawing, body movement, action and songs. And with all those exposure to such activities, the, ch the child creatively listens, right? The child creatively listens. So remember critical listening, creative listening, intensive listening, extensive listening and reading, coming to reading. Uh, I told you in the beginning about reading, the importance of reading. We have to develop reading as a habit. Reading is just a habit formation. So uh, nowadays we have many book clubs that are encouraging uh, kids and young learners to read. <coughs> we have uh, in Madurai, we have Madurai book club. In our college, we have a book club uh, by our department. Reading as a process reading for comprehension, reading for information and knowledge, reading for pleasure, experiential reading, skimming, scanning, intensive, extensive reading. So I remember one of uh, the sessions I attended in Madurai Reading Club and where uh, they discussed uh, not just books by famous authors, even regional writers, Tamil books, right? English books as well as Tamil books. There are uh, <clears throat> another book club in Madurai uh, run by college students, right, between the uh, pages, right, college students for college goers and students gather and they talk about the book between the covers, I remember. And uh, in Lady Rock College, they have started a book club. A student has started a book club and she is engaging the uh, readers around the city. See, likewise, you have to uh, in, uh, give importance to reading, join a book club and develop that habit form. So first let us understand reading as a process, reading for comprehension, reading for information and knowledge, reading for pleasure, experiential reading, skimming and scanning. What is skimming and scanning? Just, just You just skim through uh, pages and just find out the important main idea. Scanning is you just want to know specific information, you just scan the whole passage, right? So other things are self-explanatory, reading as a process, reading for comprehension, Right? You understand. Most of the times you would have done in your school days reading for comprehension. You try to read a passage, answer some questions based on that. Reading for pleasure. Right? We read storybooks, novels by famous writers, right? Chet and Bhagat. Uh, in Tamil, we have many writers, Jay Gandhan. <coughs> um, even uh, there are uh, writers from various regional uh, Hindi writers, Telugu writers, right? Uh, writers from. Uh, Assam, right? There are various important writers from many parts of India that comprises Indian literature. And today we have uh, evolved a new body of writing called Indian writing in English. So especially writings from many states, right? It is translated in English. And there are writers who, many writers like Chetan Bhagat and others who write in English, right? And you read such stories, novels, short stories, poems for pleasure. So that is one purpose of reading. Another purpose is reading for information, knowledge for your studies, for maybe you refer information and knowledge as part of your academics, right? Experiential reading. So we talk about this reader writer relationship and reader text relationship. A text becomes alive, okay, only because of the reader. 
every reader has their own perception you read a text based on your beliefs your ideas your uh, uh, system of thought your ideas especially your ideologies will influence your reading process the way you understand a text okay differs according to the individual who is reading from every person to other is a difference there is a difference in the way a person understands a text and also even if you read a particular novel or a story at the age of 20 if you are reading the same story at the age of 40 or 60 it differs your perception differs your experience what you believe in everything adds to your understanding of life understanding of the book you are reading so that is how you you, you should know the nuances of reading read between the lines okay how this experiential reading reading uh, and understanding changes over a period of time because of age as well as because of various factors like your perception your beliefs your ideologies right everything influences your reading right that is why always uh, a, a statement is always misquoted or misinterpreted you would, you would have seen politicians uh, talking about that right skimming and scanning right intensive and extensive reading so uh, you can get to know more about this writing so coming to writing the art of writing authoring skills have something to say you have you want to express yourself through writing you want to express yourself being aware of the reader so a writer is always aware of the uh, reader or the audience he keeps in mind while writing working from first draft to final draft so they're writing for various purposes right formal writing informal writing formal writing you write letters for business purposes letters to the collector letters to the officials letters to a bank manager letter to your principal letter to your teacher all those are formal letters informal letters you know to write for your friends right <clears throat> writing from first draft to final draft a sense of process developing the ideas there is a sense of direction right so keep in mind your audience who you are writing to and tailor your writing accordingly then there are uh, students who are uh, involved in content writing also I'll talk about that later. The craft of writing, crafting skills, organizing the content clearly and in a logical manner, manipulating the script, using the conventions, getting the grammar right, developing sentence structure, linking ideas, using a range of vocabulary. So all these things you have to keep in mind in the art of writing, the craft of writing, organizing the content clearly. We talk about coherence in paragraph writing. Every paragraph should have a single idea. Don't confuse too many ideas into a paragraph, right? If you talk about Madurai is a city of temples, you have to support that statement. That is the first statement. Madurai is a city of temples. You have to then write the other sentences <coughs> stating how Madurai is a city of temples. You have to support. And what are those? There, what are the temples there? You can talk about them. And come to the next. Okay, maybe you can talk about nature in Madurai, right? or you can talk about uh, Sangam poets or Sangam literature, right? You have to have only one idea in a paragraph and every paragraph should be coherent. If you are writing about Madurai, every passage should be about Madurai, right? And the culture of Madurai. Likewise, you have to be coherent in your writing, using the conventions, spelling, layout, getting the grammar right, developing sentence structure, linking ideas, using a range of vocabulary. In order to improve your vocabulary <clears throat> you have to read at least 10 new words every day from the dictionary so i recommend oxford advanced learners dictionary for you so uh, at least you can make use of the online cambridge dictionary right only if you have rich vocabulary you can write well otherwise you cannot write a letter properly or a creative work so even a letter is simple but creative works and report writings they need so much of vocabulary right you should be able to accumulate a lot of vocabulary. That is why it is it is an everyday activity. You should do, learn words every day. So over a period of time, you will occur, right? So many words. It takes two, three years at least to be proficient in English language. So you have to take some efforts in order to improve your language. I told you uh, in reading, while talking about reading, read what you love. Read what you love whatever uh, interests you or according to your interest hobbies or what you are passionate about if you love music read about 
music if you love sports read sports magazine if you uh, love listening to songs hear english songs right likewise if you align your interests and your reading habit you will drastically improve your english language proficiency that's a psychological tip i like to give you so you can improve at a faster rate if you read what you like what you love right uh, you are able to remember movie songs right you are able to memorize all the lines in a film right film song so why the reason is you like it so that is why whatever interests you if you read accordingly then you can improve your english language at a faster rate and then you can maybe you, you have to read a lot that is different then later on you can do extensive reading read whatever right they re read uh, newspapers even in newspapers select in the beginning select what you love maybe if you love the sports section read the sports section if you love the arts and culture section read the arts and culture section be quite selective in the beginning so you will get bored easily i told you that reading is a habit formation first you have to begin maybe read for half an hour yeah? and then read for uh, improve your timing maybe after a week you read for one hour a day or two hours a day you know students like you in western countries like usa uh, canada and uh, uh, britain do you know how much uh, maybe how many hours they read can anybody guess how many hours they read students undergraduate students and postgraduate students like you how many hours they read do you have any guess well guess uh, maybe we, we don't study at all we study only the day before the exam the night before the exam <clears throat> any idea you can comment in the chat box right so approximately they read for six to seven hours a day a normal undergraduate student in us or uk read for at least six hours a day can you believe that that's the statistics right and how much we are reading how we are lagging behind so we should develop this reading as a habit formation so you know paragraph writing report writing essay writing i have just touched upon so you can uh, uh, you have already dealt with this types of writing we are writing it maybe you can just get to know more about that letter writing informal writing formal writing right these are all just part of the writing process so i talked about paragraph writing and essay writing so many paragraphs together forms a good essay right in letter writing you know the various business letters right everyone have to write letters even it is a student or a official everybody have to write letters for various purposes for official purposes for business purposes for personal reasons we have to write letters we have lost that art of writing letters today everything we are sending through whatsapp right we have forgotten that art of writing letters the uh, the anxiety the anxiousness of waiting for the postman right to come and uh, give you the letters right we don't we don't have that uh, beautiful uh, <coughs> right uh, days when we write letters right it improved our vocabulary it improved our sentence structures our style of writing at least you can start writing letters to your parents let us start writing letters to your friends right your loved ones so that you can improve right just try to bring back at least uh, maybe uh, not many letters at least one letter a month you can start writing like that that's good good way of expressing yourself right so don't don't let the art of writing letters right die so you have to bring it back right as uh, literature students as english students you should write letters that itself is an art today also for many official practices and purposes we have to write letters it's part of our everyday life but personally we have lost that art of writing letters try to try to learn that art that will be handy for you at various uh, aspects of your life right so some of the uh, syntax and content with regard to the sentence and the grammar part right the content how it should be it should be clarity should be there originality should be there logic and syntax the syntax st structures sentence boundaries and the stylistic choices that you make grammar 
rules for verbs, agreements, articles and pronunciations, and the mechanics of writing, spelling, punctu punctuation, handwriting, where to give comma, where not to keep a comma, right? Organizing pro properly, as I told you, be coherent in your ideas, paragraphs, topic and supporting statements, cohesion and unity. These are all some of the features of writing, features of a paragraph, right? Features of writing. Mechanics, grammar, syntax, content, everything together, the writer's process, getting ideas, getting started, writing drafts, revising it. At the first go, everybody cannot write a flawless letter or a report or a creative piece. You have to revise it. So if you have anything in mind in order to write down those things, you need to think, right? You need to put it in words. That itself is a cognitive process. And the audience, you have to keep in mind to whom you are writing, the readers, the purpose, whether you are write, writing for entertaining purpose or a formal purpose, right? Keep in mind that and write accordingly. The reason for writing, word choice, idioms, idioms, get to know more of idioms, tone and vocabulary, how you say something matters, how you say something matters, then what you write, how you say that when you speak, when you write, how you put it in simple words. Don't complicate in a business writing or a formal writing, right? So vocabulary, enriching your vocabulary. Read dictionary every day, at least 10 new words from the dictionary religiously. That will improve your vocabulary. So keep in mind some of those tips. So coming to writing, drawing <coughs> approximate forms that resembles letters. So talking to children about the content of their writing uh, during and after the writing process. You give an activity, writing activity, and facilitate them, okay? Help them to uh, express themselves through writing. Clarify their thoughts. Provide meaningful experiences that stimulates their writing. Ask them to write a creative piece. They will come up with that. And or show them a picture and ask them to write about that. They will come up with so many ideas, so many uh, expressions, right? Providing a real audience as well as real uh, reasons for writing. This makes it worthwhile for students to improve their writing. Helping children choose topics. They may struggle to begin what to write, what to write about. They can write about the pet in their home, write about the puppy, the dog. They write about their sister or they can write about their parents. So give them some ideas to begin. They may struggle to begin. Okay. They can write about the favorite subject or they write about their doll. Right. Something simple and easy to express. So that is how we have to develop the expression, the creative, creativity, critical and creative thinking of students. Especially when it comes to uh, higher secondary students, you have to develop their create critical and creative thinking. And with regard to uh, kids, mostly you tend to uh, help them express their creativity right in the beginning stages. And these helps a child to discover their own voice as a writer, right? Making them write helps a child to discover their own voice as a writer. Very important uh, statement. So relating the study of punctuation, spelling, language conventions. According to when you're, when you're writing, when you're doing their activity, you can go around and teach them these conventions, language conventions and spelling and punctuation, etc. Standard usage and editing skills when their study relates to communicative processes, purposes, sharing the excitement of writing, the teacher's eagerness sparks the children. When you saw the video, right, the teacher is so eager, right, lively, cheerful, and that cheerfulness spreads to the students also. They are also so eager to learn, right? So that is how a teacher should be, especially at the uh, elementary level. The teacher should be vibrant, eager to learn at all levels. Of course, even at the higher secondary and collegiate level, they have to be very eager. They should have the thirst for learning. Teachers are lifelong learners, right? If you have to be effective in your teaching, you have to learn every day. Keep in mind. So encouraging inventiveness, providing a free and non-threatening non environment in which children can write. You should, you, they, the children should feel safe and secure. Right. They go back subsequently and revise, correct and redraft writing. They should have the confidence to bring it up, read aloud, show it to you and get corrections. Right. They can do 
or they have to be motivated to do right so especially the underprivileged children they will have so low self esteem uh, low self esteem and they will think they cannot write like that right you should motivate them right you can also create write creatively express yourself right at least even if they scribble something appreciate that then they will slowly develop as i told you they are slow bloomers right slow bloomers finally caring about writing and using all possible resources ideas materials to create a rich and stimulating environment so teaching grammar new activities and games should grammar be taught so that's a question right of course we have this uh, grammar classes are <clears throat> gaining importance but there is also another argument that whether grammar should really be taught right as children uh, when they imitate and learn whether they are learning grammar consciously they are unconsciously getting those grammar rules they are speaking correctly right if you go on reading if you go on immersing in all the skills lsr w listening speaking reading writing you will naturally acquire the grammar right you will naturally acquire grammar unconsciously right that's also there but there are uh, there's nothing wrong in learning the grammar rules you can learn you have to learn grammar rules but there are arguments for and against that grammar does not uh, effectively help us to read and write or we don't consciously use grammatical rules while writing right so uh, the more you immerse yourself in reading writing listening and speaking the more you will speak read and write in correct english right so that is one way but you can also encourage you have to encourage students to learn grammar uh, that is also there they should know the rules and regulations but how much they are putting it into practice is a question right competitive games collaborative games awareness activities and grammar through drama right you can dramatize you can give a role play and ask them to uh, act out the sentence types of sentences and sentence structures so i will uh, close with a video it's just a 15 minutes video it's very useful interesting and i want uh, you to listen to it please uh, stay back and i have a, another slide i will conclude with that the last slide so after this video i will just uh, talk about the role of teachers so i will conclude with that so by 3:15 we will conclude just after this video it will run for around 10 to 15 minutes right so this video uh, talks about how a teacher handles a group of students and how effectively she is uh, employing various activities so listen carefully so uh, if you have any problem let me know if you have any problem in hearing this uh, audio or uh, seeing this video let me know so um, Just hold on. that means we are going to interact with each other and we are going to speak in english now i have got something for you here what is this can any mobile mobile very good can anybody of you tell me the uses of mobile very good so all of you are well aware of the uses of mobile yes please kids mobile use calculator message Oh, is called. Okay, very good. Clap for him. You please go back. Sit. Anybody else who can tell me the uses of mobile? Yes, please, sir. Tell it to the class. Come, come here. Mobile use for message, calculator, miss calls, calling. So very good. Clap everybody for him. 
Yes. So you all are quite well aware of the uses of mobile. That's very good. Now I have something for you. I have got a magic bag. Let us see what things I have going to do. I'm going to call you one by one over here and you have to pick up one object from it and speak on that object. Now, who is going to come first? Yes, please. Oh, so what has she in her hand? Flowers. flowers. It's flowers. So now please tell them something about this flower. Flower color is orange, honey, the color is green, and so sweet. Okay, very good. Clap her up. Clap her up. Thank you so much. Anybody else who wants to speak on the flower? Okay, you please come. This is flower. This flower is very beautiful. There are many types of flowers like rose, sunflower, jasmine, etc. There are many colors of roses like orange, pink, white, etc. Very good. Clap for him, everybody. Clap for him. Very good. Please. Now I would like some other child in this class to come over here and pick up. You please come. Come sit. Oh, so what has she got for us? Dog. So please come forward and speak few lines on this dog. This is a dog. The dog is pet animal. Dog has many colors like brown, black, white, etc. Dog eat bread, milk, etc. Okay, very good, very good. So, dog has many colors and dog eats bread and milk too. Very good. Now, I would like to call one other child of this class from the back. I want you. Yes, come on. Oh, so what is this? Barbie doll. Barbie doll. So the girls are very happy to see this Barbie doll. I can see the faces. Okay, can you speak something on this Barbie doll? Barbie doll is very beautiful. Her hair is very long. It is very sweet and and long. Okay, very good. Clap for everybody. Clap for this girl. Very good. Now I would like to call upon some other girl from this show nobody. Yes. Please come. Very good. Santa Claus comes 
all the prisoners there. Santa Claus gave gifts to food to the children. Thank you so much. Very good. Clap for him, everybody. Very good. Please go. Now there is a large object left in this magic bag. Who is going to come to take out this object? Yes? You? Please come. Oh. So, what is this? This is a stethoscope. Stethoscope. So, let's put it. Yes. Now you speak few lines of the stethoscope. Stethoscope used for checking the patient. We doctor check the patient with this stethoscope. Okay, very good. Clap for him, everybody. Thank you, thank you. So the magic bag is empty now. And you people have spoken very nicely on all the objects. I have bought some pictures for you and I would like you all to speak on those pictures. So, you can watch this picture, you can see it. Can anybody tell me what does this picture denote? Yes, this is a festival of Eid. It shows the festival of Eid. Very good. Can you tell me something about the festival of Eid? Anybody? Okay. I will tell you a few lines on this festival and I have two more pictures on different festivals. So like I'm going to say the lines on this festival, you have to speak the lines on other festivals. This picture shows the festival of Eid. Eid falls after the holy month of Ramzan. People celebrate Eid after fasting for a month. They make sivayans and they go to the mosque for prayer. Okay? Now I am going to paste another picture and like I have spoken on the festival of Eid, you have to speak on that festival. Got okay? it? Holy Okay, very good. Yes. Who is going to speak on Holi? Yes, please. The festival of Holi. Very good. What do we do on the festival of Holi? The Holi festival of color. People play Holi with, with water, gulaan, very good. Very good. Clap for him, everybody. Very good. Okay. Anybody else who wants to speak on Holi? Yes. Holi is celebrated in March. Holi is celebrated in March. So that is an addition to that. Yes. You want to say something? Yes. Holi is celebrated in March. The people are play the colors. Etc. Very good. Clap for him. Now I have one more picture with me. Diwali. Diwali. Very good. Who is going to speak on Diwali? Oh, yes, please. Uh, people, uh, people play Lord Lakshmi and Ganesh. People play Lord Lakshmi and Ganesh. Okay. Very good. They worship Lord Lakshmi and Ganesh. Anybody else? Uh, yes. Children play with crackers. Children play with crackers. Very good. Don't you eat something on Diwali? Okay. Anybody from this side? Yes. What do you eat on Diwali? Sweets. Okay. What kind of sweets do you eat on Diwali? Yes. Yes, 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 please. You? Okay, very good. Gulab jamun, barfi, etc. Yes? People decorate the outfit. 
With what do you decorate the houses? How do you decorate the houses? Yes. You make rangoli, very good. Yes. How do we decorate the houses? Lights. With lights and with dia. Yes, we make dias. Okay, so you all decorate your houses with dias? Can rangoli is okay? Candles. Yes, flowers. Very good, very good. Now we are seeing three characters in this Diwali picture. Okay? Use your imagination to tell me who are these. Okay, so we can say Mr. Kanna, Mrs. Kanna, and his son. Okay? Your assignment for today is that you all are going to draw and color any when festival of your choice and you are going to write few sentences on that festival. Okay? So you can color it and you can decorate it also beautifully. So let me see tomorrow who is the most creative child of this class. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Ruby, uh, I was observing my class and there was lots of activities and children were able to speak, use language, uh, that is English. And tell me one thing, what made you plan this way using objects, pictures in order to enable uh, children to speak English? Yes, uh, it was a very interactive class and I enjoyed it. And uh, actually the children of this age, they get excited by seeing objects or pictures. If you create that anxiety in the child, when the teacher comes in the class, she brings with herself something which creates interest. Then they all together, the overall atmosphere of the class it changes and the children they become curious to know and they want to learn more and more. Same as like I brought real objects in the magic pack. And I asked the children that, yes, this is it. I have brought something for you. This is a magic bag and I have something for you all in it. So that was to arouse the curiosity of the children to prepare them to learn and speak in English. And you brought objects. Uh, items which children know and with that you were able to make them uh, describe it that means, that means they were able to speak English and that was one part that means going from known, known things and they were able to construct sentences so the kind of constructive approach you follow and from there when you moved on to the festivals which are actually concepts although objects are related to them and what made you uh, do so Actually, moving from objects to uh, concept, first I tried to, uh, like uh, speaking on the object was kind of a warm up session for them, preparing them to speak. Okay, then moving on the concept was the real plan that I wanted them to speak on some concept. And today, the topic which I took was festivals because they know about festivals and immediately asking them that they, oh, this is Holi festival or this is Diwali festival, now you speak on the festival. It's better to make them first prepare on it, make a ground for it, uh, prepare them to speak. Once the language is on their tongue, then speaking on the concept may becomes easier for them. Uh, you also give them homework, which is uh, writing. From speaking, you moved up to writing. That's a good thing because they have got the ideas uh, now, the, even the language to write about. So that, that's a good thing. Uh, probably this is a mistake the teachers uh, should get that. Uh, bring in objects from real life and the ideas children know from their generate language for your teachers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. So you understood, right? It's self-explanatory. I did not explain much uh, how creatively she engaged the class with the known objects and made them talk on those. And also she gave an assignment, homework to write. And it needs a little amount of thinking and effort on the part of the teacher to uh, 
bring in such objects, okay, create materials. That is important uh, with regard to teaching of English. It begins with course book and how it is culture specific, right? Representing all the cultures, underprivileged even. So in that way, you can uh, represent the underprivileged <coughs> sections and make it interesting for them too. Creating posters, charts, flashcards as shown by the teacher, toy models, audio video cassettes, CDs and DVDs. And as I use YouTube videos, a podcast can be used for that, right? And skipping this may be uh, for lack of time. I don't want this, uh, I don't want to play this video. It's just creating objects, okay? Maybe I'll later on share with you in the WhatsApp group. So I'll conclude with the role as teachers, right? The role of teachers in language learning, the role of teachers in high school, higher secondary and higher education, we can conclude that all these are <clears throat> related to every other section or every other group of learners, right? Create autonomous learners, right? Especially creating uh, learning, autonomous learners in the sense, creating uh, learners who can learn independently, right? How to make notes, it's part of storage skill how to answer questions, how to read and understand, especially it's very important with reference to uh, higher secondary students and college students, how to work in a group, right? How to organize, you develop it from your the childhood stage, from group activities to role playing, uh, to uh, creative expressions. And what they need in life is, they have to become autonomous learners, independent learners, how to work in a group, how to organize one's written work and how to be independent. That is important. So how to answer questions, how to make notes, how to read and understand with context clues, context clues, how to work in a group, how to organize one's written work. Psychological preparation, that is where your academic can, uh, especially the psychological preparation, stress-related matters, uh, building a, a holistic personality, right? A teacher plays an important role in building a holistic personality, right? Character formation, teaching morality to students. So you should ultimately make them take responsible for their own learning, right? These are all part of creating autonomous learners. Be a facilitator and mentor. So it is not the traditional authoritarian role of a teacher nowadays being a facilitator, facilitate the learning process, be a mentor for students, right? And help them to learn all these skills, gathering skills. As I told you, listening, speaking, reading, writing is the primary. And apart from that, they need gathering skills. Encourage them to use a dictionary. Encourage them to refer library. Go to get a membership in a public library or read. Encourage them to read in a college library or school library. Retrieval skills, how they can write, summarizing, writing logically, summarizing a content. Content is king today, right? Content writing is uh, booming today. It's a booming business and many people are uh, uh, today employed as content writers and many are into, especially during this lockdown period, many are switching over to content writing. It's difficult to gain uh, much uh, advantage, much uh, progress in the career as a content writer in the beginning but later on there are people who are earning uh, more than 30 to 40 thousand a month in content writing but in the beginning you'll not get much in content writing but you have to be known right to the outside world you have to build your brand so content is king today especially it's important to develop your english language skills in order to be a good content writer right and finally, I would like to conclude with life skills and soft skills, right? Almost both are interrelated, overlaps with each other. Life skills like empathy, right? Um, emotional intelligence, all these are part of life skills, right? Self-awareness, behavioral changes, uh, all these you have to teach the children, okay? Essential life skills, how to handle a situation, how to handle a situation with calmness, okay? How to be irresponsible. So, so many things are there under life skills. I want you to explore. Soft skills, you know, 
uh, writing creatively, right, critical, critical thinking, time management, adaptability, all these are part of uh, soft skills, interview skills. So life skills are life oriented skills. Today we need to uh, teach students life skills essentially as well as soft skills. So I would like to conclude with that. If you have any questions, you can put in the chat box. Hope you understood the course. And uh, I want you to put your questions if you have any. Otherwise, we can conclude. James, do you have any questions?